Hello fellow patrons. Uh, what you see here is a uh, robot arm made from uh, VEX components and it uses a VEX Cortex microcontroller to control the stepper motors uh, connected to this uh, arm. The arm has uh, three stepper motors, one for the wrist, one for the uh, elevation, one for the azimuth, and actually it has a, a, a fourth one for the arm that raises and lowers the arm or bends the arm. So it has four stepper motors. And to control it I use a uh, SparkFun quad step controller board and I hooked it up to the VEX Cortex using the digital I.O. ports on the VEX Cortex. Here you can see the uh, VEX, I mean, sorry, the uh, uh, stepper fun quad step controller board. It's a little red board with all the wires hooked up to it. Uh, that, that board was sold by SparkFun. Uh, apparently you can use 3D printer boards also for this for similar uh, construction. Uh, and uh, I've also built another board using a se separate ste uh, stepper motor driver ICs. Uh, that were re that were used in uh, 3D printer controllers. In back of the arm, uh, you can see the VEX Cortex with all the wires leading into the uh, digital I/O ports on the VEX uh, Cortex. What you're seeing now is the the gearing for the arm elevation drive. The arm elevation drive is very similar to the uh, a person's shoulder that would raise the arm uh, or lower the arm uh, and uh, it has to be able to carry the weight of the wrist and the uh, frame for the arm as well as the um, lead screw and the, uh, the motor for the wrist. The the elevation arm uh, uses the stepper motor with some gearing of its own before I uh, interfaced it or adapted it to the uh, VEX uh, green gear that you see, the big one. Um, and that's how I can get the uh, st small stepper motor to uh, lift the weight of the arm as well as the wrist. What you see here now is the, uh, the wrist and the gripper. The wrist can turn 0 to 360 degrees driven by that stepper motor. Uh, that stepper motor can be uh, uh, moved very precisely. Uh, it can move to uh, about a 1 32nd of a, of a um, step uh, using, uh, or actually maybe 1 16th of a step using the quad step uh, controller board. And uh, I have another controller board that uses uh, different three, uh, 3D printer drivers, stepper motor drivers that can allow it to go up to 1 32nd of a step. So you can get very precise movements or turns with the wrist. Uh, this would allow the wrist to pick up objects very carefully. Uh, it could even make it uh, maybe draw something on a piece of paper. It's that, you know, it's 3D printer technology so it can act like a printer. Uh, the only thing is the VEX frame is not rigid enough necessarily to avoid a lot of vibrations which would then distort the image a bit. Now I'm going to show you how the wrist can move uh, using uh, the standard uh, VEX Cortex uh, game controller which is uh, right now connected to the VEX Cortex. The whole arm is controlled by the two joysticks. Uh, one joystick controls the arm elevation and as well as the arm azimuth. Uh, the elevation moves it up and down and the azimuth moves it side to side and uh, the, the azimuth is good to 0 to 360 degrees. Uh, the uh, elevation can move plus minus uh, 90 degrees. So it's, and it can move very accurately uh, because of it's stepper motor driven. This is a uh, very, very precise motion. So here you see it uh, moving uh, the wrist clockwise, and then I can move it counterclockwise. And uh, 
the speed can it, it can be speeded up by uh, sending it more pulses per second. Right now I'm at, at the slow mode, which is the very accurate mode. And when you're in the micro stepping mode, it would move even slower, but it would move very precisely. So you can get uh, ac uh, precision, you know, to within a fraction of a degree. One sixteenth of a step right now. And like I said, with other stepper motor drivers, you can get one thirty second of a step. And then I also have a large um, stepper motor driver that allows me to micro step to one two hundred fifty sixth of a step. For, for very precise motion, and I, I've hooked that one up to the azimuth drive. And the wrist, I mean the uh, the gripper can be open or closed using the standard VEX motor. I don't have that hooked up right at this minute, but when I do, I'll be able to pick up objects very, you know, with the gripper. The gripper will just be using a standard VEX motor because uh, hooking up another stepper motor to it would make the the arm too heavy to balance the way I have it set up right now but you can see this is all stepper motor driven uh, most applications on VEX systems use DC motors or servo motors the same type of motors that are used in RC airplanes but uh, and some of them have been modified for continuous rotation and I'll have to use one of those motors for the gripper because like I said, it would add too much weight and, and unbalance the arm. Okay, now I'm moving the arm in elevation. You can see it slowly move up. And I can move it down. Move it up. And again, that's stepper motor driven. Moving the arm up again. And then I'm moving it down. Right now, everything's controlled with the VEX game controller. But you can also directly control the stepper motors and make them move any any amount of distance. The arm also has a VEX limit switch in the back to, so that it won't ex exceed its uh, limits. And I also plan to put a VEX potentiometer or a quadrature encoder to measure the angle of the arm moving up or down in elevation so that it doesn't uh, bump into anything and damage itself. And here you see it moving in azimuth. Oh. moved briefly. Power for the stepper motors uh, comes from this uh, 12 volt SLA battery. Uh, the, the quad stepper, the Sparkfun quad stepper, stepper can take voltages anywhere from uh, 12 volts to uh, actually 30 volts. But right now I only have a 12 volt uh, battery hooked up to it, which is sufficient for this application. I could hook up two batteries in series to get 24 volts, which would give me more power to the motors and make it make the motors move smoother. Uh, but right now I'm not doing that. 
Another feature of this arm is that uh, using the VEX Cortex and the uh, game controller, I can train it. I can make it uh, record the motions into the memory of the VEX Cortex and then have it uh, play them back again. So I sort of can train the arm. Eventually I'll, I'll train it to pick up an object and then uh, place it in a different location or pick up a glass of water, a small glass of water and move it to a table or something like that. And, I'll be, and it'll be able to repeat the motion from uh, using the stepper motors uh, because the stepper motors are very accurate in positioning and if I home them, in other words I put them to a certain location so that when I start recording the motion and when I'm done recording all the motions I go back to that home position, that, that original location, the origin uh, I can play back the motion pretty accurately using the stepper motors. Uh, normally uh, with VEX DC, motor, DC motors and servo motors you'd have to use PID control loops which are far more complicated. Uh, the VEX Cortex right now is controlling the, the, these stepper motors in a, what's called open loop control. It just sent, tells it how many steps to move and it just moves those steps. So you don't even need a quadrature encoder unless you want extra precision. Uh, there's no reason not to use a quadrature encoder, uh, but uh, I can position these stepper motors more accurately than the VEX uh, quadrature encoders right now. Uh, you'd have to use a very precise quadrature encoder to make any difference, especially when you're micro-stepping these steppers. So when I use 1 16th or 1 32nd or 1 2 56th of a step, the VEX quadrature encoder is not going to be much help. There's not enough resolution in it. You'd need a uh, 4096 parts uh, quadrature encoder uh, to be really good for this type of application and give it more precision. But with open loop, uh, the VEX Cortex, I, I developed the uh, control algorithms in Robot C, uh, and it just toggles the uh, digital I/O bits um, to, uh, to to make the stepper motor uh, step and direction. Uh, for each motor. So all I have to do to make it move is I, 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 turn, uh, I pulse the step signal and if I want to change direction I pulse the direction signal so I can make it go clockwise or counterclockwise. Very similar to the way VEX motors work. The arm is going to be able to bend, um, to move just like a human arm, it's going to be able to bend or flex uh, between 0 and 90 degrees. Uh, the way I do that is I use a lead screw from a 3D printer. Uh, again, this is using all 3D printer technology. You can buy these lead screws on eBay or Amazon very reasonably. And using the lead screw and the, and the nut that com comes with it, I've been able to uh, make these arms bend just like a human arm. So uh, right now it's not working too well because the arm is unbalanced and it's too heavy. I need to add more power to the arm stepper motor to make it lift the weight of the wrist and the stepper motor that's on the end of the wrist. And I have to balance it better. Uh, but when I do that, then the I have been able to make the arm bend backwards and forwards um, when it didn't have the extra load of the uh, gripper. And the way it does that is the lead screw pulls on those two rods that you see. Here you can see the two, the two uh, push rods. And the, uh, the, the, the threaded uh, lead screw from the 3D printer, which you see on the top, turns and it pulls those two rods to make the arm bend. Uh, and so it can bend between 0 and 90 degrees and pick up a small object. Um, and I've been able to use this lead screw with uh, regular DC motors and it can pick up very heavy objects using that. It's really a, a bionic arm when you do that. With the stepper motors it's not so powerful because the, I'm driving the, the lead screw directly from the stepper motor at this point. I'm not even gearing it. If I geared the stepper motor I could get more torque for the lead screw and then be able to lift up even heavier objects and I wouldn't have the trouble that I'm having right now of 
lifting the arm, which is the, the stepper motor directly driven. Here you can see the the nut from the, it's just a standard 3D printer nut uh, that slides up and down that lead screw and then it pulls those two push rods and those two push rods are hooked up to the forearm to make it bend at this joint that you see where the two gears are in the axle there the arm will bend right at that point up and down it can bend to zero to ninety degrees um, and it uh, when I did it with DC motors uh, it was very strong it actually I needed limit switches to stop it in time because when I didn't it would bend those uh, push rods and those push rods are very thick and very sturdy they're the thickest ones that I could buy at a uh, hobby store uh, and uh, it they are very strong and yet the, the the mechanism when it was directly driven with the DC geared motor bent them I don't have that problem with the stepper motors though fortunately and in fact I don't even need the limit switches because I can move that arm very precisely using stepper counts but I am gonna add it in anyways just for safety and a, a level of safety just the way 3d printers have limit switches at each one of their axes and another reason to have it in there is for the homing so when it hits that limit switch I know that's the home position and that's what I'll use when I'm playing back motion scripts so uh, I'm going to have limit switches in the azimuth the elevation and the arm uh, so that they when it touches the uh, limit switch that'll be the home position so that it, then it can be able to repeat the motion accurately when, after I record it. The motion script uh, generator runs on the VEX Cortex. It's just a, uh, one of the functions of the uh, uh, stepper motor arm, arm stepper application written in Robot C. And uh, those LEDs that you see are the uh, record and play LEDs that indicate when it's recording motion scripts and the, uh, the other one indicates when it's playing them back so that you have a visual indication of what's, what the robot arm is doing. In the next segment, once I get the arm fully functional and the azimuth axis moving clearly, uh, I plan to uh, demonstrate the uh, motion script generator so that I'll be able to train the arm to pick up an object automatically and then have it repeat the same motion from its home position. That'll be the goal for, for the next uh, one or two uh, future videos. Thank you. Bye.